Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, the speculative evolution of trolls. Here we go. So the last troll that I have to talk about is the uh, is the woodland troll right here. You know, and he, uh, you know, and he. Um, this is uh, this is definitely going to be a longer one just because of all the stuff I have to go into with this specific troll. The woodland troll evolved somewhere around the same time as Norwegian troll, so went somewhere around the Pliocene. Although these guys differ in a decent amount of biology from these guys. These guys are a lot larger, a lot more savage. Um, these guys are around um, six feet tall, so around the same height as a man, um, with uh, reddish fur, red fur with a green tint to it, possibly due to the uh, the uh, what's it called? Um, some of the plant growth in their fur to help to uh, help both camouflage them and to um, uh, what's it called? Uh, help camouflage them, and just to help show off the color a little bit more. Um, now, with this species specifically, with this species, right, if you're going to be doing your growing, you might as well go, you might as well go do it somewhere else. Look at this dude. Dude's ridiculous. Look. And then he, then he acts all fine and stuff whenever the camera's on him. Anyway, uh, sorry, back on, to the, back on to these trolls, though. Uh, the difference, uh, one of the differences between this species is that they still have a lot of their toes. Although you can see it's a little bit of a transition between uh, the flat foot uh, going into the, uh, the three toes, similar to the Norwegian troll, and a mixture, or in a look, and it's a far cry from the, um, from the, uh, the, uh, what's it called, the, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? prehensile toes of the uh, primeval troll. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like a mixture. Uh, with the toe, with the uh, toe claws being rather large and being a sim and being seen uh, scraping uh, lichens and mosses off the uh, ends of their uh, off the rocks to be used for eating. Um, so they effectively got toe scrapers. Uh, now, with these guys, they have quite a large range, uh, living from the mountains to the lowlands, being probably the most adaptable troll out of all the ones I mentioned, with these guys living in more rainforested and uh, grasslandish environments, uh, those guys living uh, more uh, mammoth steppes and um, uh, sparse woodlands, with these guys living in, uh, uh, you know, lagoons and um, oceans various parts of the oceans, um, mostly in shallow areas, uh, like, or, not shallow areas, but places where their snouts can reach the top, uh, they'll eventually, or some of them, some of the time, they'll, uh, go down further, but sorry, back onto these guys, I, I keep getting off track, um, now, what's interesting about these guys is that you might notice the calcified part of his face, this is what I was talking about earlier in the other video is that somewhere during this time period these guys had a genetic bottleneck and during this part there was line interbreeding and a disease a genetic disease appeared during this bottleneck and it caused parts of their um it caused during uh, prolonged exposure to sunlight um for parts of their skin would cause it to calcify greatly to the point of almost a stone-like material. Or I'm, sorry, if I, I'm I'm terrible at explaining. Essentially, if they're out in the sun for too long, they calcify, and it can kill them if it goes too far all over their body. Now, for this troll, he managed to get out just in time with part of his uh, arm being stuck in a rock that he couldn't budge free from, and part of his face being exposed for a long enough amount of time. Uh, this male will, li will live, but overall uh, has to live with the burden of um, not being only being able to see out of one eye for the rest of his life. Now, the woodland trolls have uh, decently reduced horns. They um, use them as a way of species recognition. They um, are the only trolls to seem to have a somewhat figured out language where they uh, often talk to each other via whistles and clicks and... Um, Having different dialects over different trolls. They are monogamous, unlike most of the other trolls that I've mentioned, where they mate for life. Um, 
having strong bonds with each other, where both the male and the female take care of raising the offspring. Like I mentioned earlier, they're about five feet tall. They are the most dexterous trolls, uh, being able to climb trees and swing from trees some, and uh, swing from some of the evergreen trees in their area. Um, a little bit like these guys when they're younger, but um, overall they'll usually use the skill to reach uh, higher food, like uh, they're uh, like one of the things they eat are pine cones. Uh, and similar to other tree, sorry, similar to other trolls. They have uh, very acidic stomachs, and they're able to eat most of the things around them, uh, taking a great liking to sweet things, which, uh, show, which shows greatly in a lot of the teeth in between the tusks. Uh, their noses are greatly reduced compared to the other troll species, um, and they're probably the most human-like in terms of the other trolls, where they'll not often make clothing, but they will ambush people and they will steal uh, various clothing and things that they like. This troll in particular managed to, um, oh, I said there was like a prince escort. Somebody was escorting a king, and this creature ambushed them along with its mate and managed to steal uh, one of the capes, and that's what he's currently wearing right now, along with using animal skins and hides similar to the Norwegian troll. These guys were the longest living troll species, eventually being hunted out by, uh, somewhere around the 1700s was the last report of one, although unconfirmed sightings still happen every once in a while. Um, overall, they, uh, they show a great interest in art. They like to, uh, they like to use, uh, various plants and herbs, along with, uh, berries they crush up along with the various fecal matters of other animals they find to create uh, rock art of how they interpret the world. Their tails are greatly reduced to, uh, unlike uh, the Norwegian and primeval troll, but not to such an extent of the sea troll. Um, they, um, they make more sophisticated tools than the Norwegian trolls, uh, being able to uh, have their own way of flint napping. And, um, Typically, they, uh, what's the word? Typically, they, um, crap, my brain just shit itself. Hold on. I'm on a roll, and then all of a sudden, my brain just cray, just goes, Poof. um, what was I talking about again? Right. So, um, you know, typically, they should, they have, uh, they have very complex art. They seem to like to use the colors blue and red, similar to the colors of their own body. Um, and they, uh, they've they been known to make alliances with other monogamous pairs of trolls to make a large groups of them, in which case they'll usually go out to hunt or take over human settlements. These animals are indifferent towards humans, often seeing them as either obstacles or... Um, what's it? Either seeing them as obstacles or... Uh, generally uh, competition for resources, but never truly hating them. Unlike the Norwegian trolls, which have a deep hatred for humans. Um, or at least did. Uh, you know, not, they're extinct now. But, um, all these, uh, all these trolls are extinct. It's, uh, yeah, they all died out in various ways, with the uh, woodland troll possibly surviving to the modern day in very low uh, populations. Um, learning to stay away from human, human settlement and making their uh, lives uh, mostly unknown. Uh, they've, been, they've been shown to, uh, during the Middle Ages, uh, to show, sorry, to um, make, uh, you know, small structures and settlements for them to temporarily stay in. Most of these creatures are uh, nomadic, go over, going over uh, various established territories or uh, various points in time, um, you know, and uh, so on and so forth. Essentially, they make se they make several different territories in different areas, mark the territories via various uh, stones and uh, 
scrapes on the trees and rocks, and then they migrate to each territory depending on different parts of the year. Occasionally sharing said area if there's enough resources with other woodland trolls. And while their name does suggest woodland troll, they have been found to live uh, uh, near coastlines and various other places, occasionally getting into uh, confrontations with the Norwegian trolls, which are quite a tad bigger than they are. Let me show you. Being pretty, that's a pretty decent size. Uh, that's a pretty accurate size compared to the two. The only accurate size, I'd say, and the only size I'd say that isn't accurate to these guys is the sea troll. With the sea troll, sorry, with the sea troll being around, uh, yeah, whatever. Sea troll being around maybe this big compared to all of them. But, um, you know, besides that, these three troll species are relatively accurate in terms of size. Um, with, uh, these guys differing in size, same here. This is probably, like, a larger specimen. Um, but like I said, the, this guy are the ancestor to all three of these. So, you know, it varies. And, um, yeah, that's, uh... That's the speculative evolution of trolls, everyone. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll um, see you guys in a little bit. If you guys want me to go into more detail of it in the future, I will. Just let me know. Everybody have a good one.